In this video we're going to work on a pretty big idea and that's the idea of transformations when they are applied to functions. So since this is a pretty big topic, uh, let's get a big picture idea of what we're doing. So the big idea is this. We are going to start with some sort of parent function, sometimes I like to call this a template, and then make small changes known as transformations to it and create a new function. The special thing about this new function which we end up creating is that it will often inherit a lot of the same properties as the original function. You can see that in my little uh, example here that even in my transformed function it has a lot of the same curves it's just been put into a different spot. So these transformations are really helpful if we know a lot about our original function because we can figure out what it turns into. Now there's some very basic transformations that we can usually apply to a function. I like to split these up into groups of outside transformations and inside transformations. The reason why I split them into two groups uh, is because it helps me remember what effects they have. When dealing with outside transformations, these deal with your y values, and so everything's affected in the vertical direction. So think of up and down. For our inside transformations, these will affect the x values or the horizontal direction, so left and right. Some of the first transformations that you can apply is simply adding or subtracting a number. And you'll notice that we can either do this outside of our function, or we can do it directly on the inside, right next to that x. And the effect this has is it'll take that parent function and just move it to a different spot, or shift it somewhere. So when you're on, on the outside and you add 2, shifts up. On the outside and you minus 2, shifts down. Take note that when working on the inside, this actually works the opposite way. So if I put a plus 2 on the inside, it goes left 2 units. And if I put a minus 2 on the inside, then it goes right 2 units. Alright, some other things that we can do with transformations is stretching and shrinking. This is usually done through multiplication. And it really depends on how big uh, you multiply it by, so 4 or 5 or something like that. Here I'm going to take my function, multiply it by 2, and this would stretch it in the vertical direction by a factor of 2. If, however, I use a number between 0 and 1, it will shrink it by some sort of factor. If I use 1 half, by a factor of 2. We can do the same multiplying on the inside of the function. It has a slightly different effect. But remember, these are affecting things in the horizontal direction. So multiplying by 2 on the inside will shrink it by 2. Multiplying by a half will stretch it by 2. All right, just a couple of last transformations that you can do, and that's applying a negative sign. You can either do it to the outside or the inside. With a negative sign, this will take the function and reflect it. If you put it on the outside, remember you're in the vertical direction, so it flips it right over the x-axis. When you put the negative on the inside, this will reflect it over the y-axis. So by applying these basic transformations, you can start with some sort of template or parent function and make some new functions. Here are some helpful tips uh, that you can think of when you start using these transformations. The very first thing that you want to do is just identify the parent function that's being used. This is because you wanted to identify some key features that it has or some key points on the original graph. Once you've done that, you can start applying these transformations one by one. Start with the transformations on the inside of the function, and then slowly work your way out until you get to all of them. Always keep in mind that those inside transformations, they work the opposite of your usual intuition. This means that if you see a, an f of x plus 2, and that plus 2 is right on the x, you know, the inside, then even though your brain says it should probably go right, it actually does go left. Let's take a real quick example so we can see some of these transformations in practice. So here I have a simple graph that I'm going to use as my parent function. So just identifying it, I can see that it has this nice straight line and this little curvy part. I want to apply these transformations uh, one by one. Let's start with the ones on the inside and work our way out. 
So the very innermost transformation here is where I'm adding a negative 4. So let's see, what effect will that have? Well, since I'm adding a negative number and it's on the inside, then this will move it right 4 units. The next transformation that we can see is that there's a negative sign out front of our function. So that one's on the outside. Negative signs cause reflections. So I will say reflect. Since it's on the outside, we're dealing with up, down, or vertical. So reflect over x axis. All right, it looks like we have one more transformation, the plus one on the end. That is a shift up, up one unit. Okay, so we want to apply these things one at a time, starting with the innermost one and working our way out. Let's do that first one. We're going to take our entire function and shift it right four units. Notice how we have these key points that I can keep track of and I can figure out where the new points are. So this point will go over one, two, three, four. Put that on there. This point will go over one, two, three, four. Put that on there. Uh, this point that originally was there will be over one, two, three, four. So now it's there. This point is over one, two, three, four. This point over one, two, three, and four. Okay? So this first transformation that we apply, we can see that the entire straight line moves over. We'll have our little curved spot right here. All right, moving on. Now we want to take it and reflect it over the x-axis. Think of your key points, now flipping them over the x. So this was 3 above, now it's going to be 3 below. This one's way up here, 6 above, oh, now it's down here at 6 below. Same with this one. Let's see, that one's 4, so now at negative 4. And this one back up at 6. Okay. So let's connect our lines here. Nice straight line. And our curve part. Right, I can see it's gone to the right. It's been reflected. One last transformation to go. And that's everything will be moved up by 1. So this guy's moved up by 1. This guy's moved up by 1. Got our straight line here. There's our one spot there, one spot there, one spot there. There we go. So this new one down here represents our negative f of negative 4 plus x plus 1. So just like that, you can apply many different transformations and come up with new graphs. But again, they look pretty much the same as the original.